Hello and welcome to another episode of Massage Unwrapped. I'm Linda Roysom, your host, and joining me today to talk about the wonderful benefits of Reiki is Ariana Vincent. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about her before we get started. Ariana is the CEO and founder of Ariana Institute, where the focus is on inspiring massage education and wellness for the body, mind, and spirit. She has been a Reiki master in the Yusui lineage for 13 years and has participated in cross-cultural spiritual studies for 32 years. She offers Reiki courses in Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3, the master teacher level. Ariana offers 30 hands-on and online classroom continuing education courses throughout the United States. She also maintains a full-time healing practice in Austin, Texas. She has been a certified massage therapy instructor and continuing education provider for 13 years. Her source of inspiration is a quote by Pericles. What you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Ariana, welcome to the show. I am quite pleased to have you here, and uh, Reiki is a subject near and dear to my heart, so welcome. Thank you, Linda. I'm delighted to be here. So for the audience who might not know what Reiki is, could you just uh, give us a brief overview of um, kind of the history of Reiki, how it started? Sure, I'd be happy to. Reiki was synthesized into being by Dr. Mikao Usui, who was in Japan at the turn of the century. And so he went on a 21-day retreat at Mount Kurosawa in Japan. And during that retreat, it became revealed to him that uh, the essence of Buddhism and Hinduism came together in a confluence to develop what's now known as the Usui method of Reiki healing. It can be either offered as hands-on or hands-off, and it's an energetic form of therapy that's designed to help bring balance and harmony to the body. I know you mentioned balance. Um, So what other conditions would uh, Reiki be good for, and why would somebody want to seek a Reiki treatment as opposed to getting a regular massage? Reiki is really wonderful for many treatments and for many ages, from infants to the elderly. And one thing that I've noticed about Reiki as I was contemplating uh, preparing for this conversation with you is that Reiki can be offered at times when other treatments may not be offered. For example, a friend of mine is having um, surgery for carpal tunnel. And so immediately after surgery, when the scars are fresh and the wounds are open, you would not want to offer a regular massage therapy treatment. It would be contraindicated, but Reiki would be very indicated in instances like that because it is a hands-off treatment. And so you can offer the Reiki energy post-surgery, whether it's a carpal tunnel or a cesarean section or any type of surgery that's been where the wound has been opened. And another, th- another way that you can utilize Reiki treatments would be for a deep vein thrombosis. If someone, for example, has cancer and they're at risk for deep vein thrombosis, you would not want to do any circulatory type massages that would stimulate the circulatory system. But you could do a gentle holding, what's called um, in the medical community energetic holding. And so you could offer an energetic holding, otherwise known in the Reiki community if you're Reiki trained as Reiki. And so those are two examples of uh, times when you could use Reiki when you wouldn't use other modalities. And then once healing has occurred with the surgery, for example, then you can introduce your other modalities again. What does a typical session look like? Uh, The Reiki session can be done uh, very calmly and peacefully. It can be done anywhere. It can be done in a client's home. It can be done in an office environment. It can be done in your professional office. And so um, that's one advantage of Reiki. You don't have to have any special equipment, no massage chair involved. Typically, as a massage therapist, since I do have a table, I offer Reiki on a table with the client lying fully clothed in a supine position. And so this is another advantage of Reiki is that it can be offered with the client fully clothed. And so if someone has modesty issues or if it's their first time session with you and they want to become acquainted with your energy and your office space, they can do so without having to disrobe. So the client would lie supine in a supported supine position, and then you uh, typically the Reiki session begins at the head, and it goes down through the face, and then the neck and shoulders, the torso, the arms, the head, the legs, and then ends with the feet. And the Reiki energy goes through the body, 
from the front to the back, so you do not have to turn the client over, which is another um, benefit to Reiki, especially if you have a client who's very large and it's difficult for the client to turn over, then you could offer the session completely face up. And this is also good for geriatric clients or any client who's bed bound. Then you could offer the session either at hospice or in a hospital bed or in your therapeutic environment. So how would you evaluate a client? Do you do like a typical evaluation process similar to um, giving a massage or how does that work? Yes, it's very important when you evaluate a Reiki client to do so in, that you're conforming with the laws of your state. And so in Texas, we have a, an intake form to be complete, and the client signs it, and the therapist signs it, and dates it. And that's in compliance with the Texas Department of State Health Services. And other states have similar um, requirements. In addition to that, I have a form that's specifically designed for Reiki, and it asks about previous Reiki treatments, and of course the health history of the person, and what the intention of the person is for this particular session, what their goals are, because it's a very interactive type of process where the client comes in, it's very client-centered. And so the client comes in with a specific uh, goal in mind, or perhaps not, but typically there is a specific goal in mind. And so that is noted in the chart, and then the client signs it. And then every time the client comes back, you know what's happened between sessions and how they felt after the last session, and uh, any changes in the conditions, and also any medications that the client may be taking. So it's a very thorough assessment. Can you give us an, uh, one or two examples of how um, you've been able to help uh, a Reiki client? Uh, what was their condition? Um, how long did it take? And what were the results? Yes, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, one of my clients, I specialize in soothing trauma and PTSD. And so several of my clients come to me post-trauma. And after a traumatic event has occurred, Sometimes there's a desire by the person not to be touched immediately after that event, and that's understandable, and I'm certainly compassionate and empathetic with that. And so the client will come to me to help restore balance and to help restore a feeling of safety and security in the world, to be touched in a non-sexual, healthy way that can help them restore their balance and come to a point of equilibrium and equanimity in their body. And so that's, that's one example of, uh, for example, post-assault or post-PTSD uh, related to uh, war. And those, the, that type of client, although it's hard to generalize because each client is so unique and they're treated very uniquely, and, but in, in a general sense, the PTSD clients have shown a very um, good rate of, uh, I don't want to say success, but I notice a difference in the way they feel when they come in or seem to feel when they come in and the way they appear when they leave. The energy is brighter, the eyes are brighter, the affect is lightened, and they verbally express a difference in the way that they feel. So that would be one example. And then another example would be post-surgery, as we discussed earlier. What so, would be a typical price range uh, for a Reiki session? I usually charge uh, approximately a dollar a minute. It's 60 minutes for $65 is what I typically charge for a Reiki session. And how can somebody get in touch with you for a treatment? I have a website that gives a, a list of the treatments that I offer, including my Reiki treatments and my Reiki classes. The website is www.arianainstitute.com. That's A-R-I-A-N-A-I-N-S-T-I-T-U-T-E.com. Now, is Reiki a certification program, or is it just necessary to take continuing education for a massage therapist to be able to offer uh, Reiki to their clients? The majority of the time, you'll go to uh, the, the person who's interested in learning Reiki will attend a class, whether it's a continuing education class offered by a massage therapist, or whether it's a class offered by a Reiki practitioner who is not a, a massage therapist. I'm a licensed massage therapy continuing education provider and massage therapy instructor, as well as being a nationally certified massage therapy instructor. And so all of the Reiki classes that people take with me are approved for continuing education credits in addition to Reiki training. And so uh, that's an advantage that people would have coming to me versus coming to someone who is a Reiki practitioner who's not certified massage therapy instructor, either locally or nationally. And there are organizations that offer 
that are international organizations that offer certification programs. However, those programs are not really um, necessary in order to practice Reiki and to offer Reiki sessions under the umbrella of a massage therapy license. Now, Reiki is, uh, you don't actually have to be a massage therapist in order to perform Reiki. Reiki is uh, good for just the general public to be able to do to their, their self or even their loved ones. Can you tell me um, what the different levels entail and do you require your students to be a massage therapist or do you also teach to the general public? I do teach to the general public. In fact, I'm offering a class um, in a couple of weeks at the Academy of Oriental Medicine here in Austin and that class is open to the general public as well as to people who are licensed massage therapists as well as licensed professional counselors. Now those people can get certificate um, continuing education credits. The other people who are interested in learning Reiki do, and do not require or desire continuing education credits are more than welcome to attend the classes. And some states do require that you be a massage therapist in order to offer Reiki, and other states do not require that. Currently in Texas, it's not required that you be a licensed massage therapist in order to offer Reiki. However, there is some legislation pending to change that. And so at the current time, however, people can offer Reiki without being a licensed massage therapist. And what I find in my training people who are interested in learning Reiki is that it can be very beneficial for individuals who want to learn Reiki for their own self-treatment, as well as people who are, have uh, spouses or loved ones or friends who are uh, ill, and they may want to offer comfort to that person. And one way to do that, especially in the oncology world and the geriatric community, is to be able to offer Reiki. And so that can be very empowering to a caretaker, to be able to offer Reiki to their loved ones, as well as to offer the Reiki self-treatments to themselves. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the different levels and what you teach in each? Yes, Reiki Level 1 is usually an introductory uh, session to Reiki. You learn uh, there are certain... Um, there are certain uh, words that you use in Reiki that you use in conjunction with the treatment. And uh, in level one, you learn the first set of words that are used. And uh, that is the word Reiki, which means universal life healing. And so the purpose of using the words as you're offering the session is to calm your mind and to keep your energy focused in the present moment. And then there are other other treatments, that, other words that you use in conjunction with the treatment that are offered in level two, and then in the level three training, you have advanced, you learn the last of the advanced words that you use in the Reiki training. And so I think of the words as a focal point or an opportunity to center, calm the mind, keep the energy in the present moment, release the mind of thoughts of the past and concerns about the future, but just allowing that person by repetition of word to keep the um, energy totally in the present moment. And then there are also um, attunements that are offered in level one and level two and level three. And each level of attunement is attuning to the what we call the spiritual energy of the universe, but people can call it whatever they feel comfortable with. It does not have to be aligned with any specific tradition. And so there are different attunements that go with the three levels. And after the Reiki level three, the person is uh, known as a Reiki master. And in my teaching, I combine the master teaching, the master level with the teaching level. Mm -hmm. And so people are able to offer Reiki as a course after they complete Reiki Level 3 at Haryana Institute. Some programs divide that and the master level and the teaching level are separate, but in, in my program they're combined. That's how I was taught and so that's how I continue my lineage. Um, do you offer your uh, Reiki classes online as well or just in the live situation? I do. I just began offering classes online three years ago and incorporated Reiki Level 1 like Reiki Level 2 and Reiki Level 3 in the online training. And if people wish, they can come schedule a Reiki session with me if they like to have personal contact. And I also offer at no additional charge the attunement. And so people can come visit me and receive their attunement after they've taken the online class. And many people really love to do that and enjoy that. And they may schedule a session or two with me in order to experience uh, the way I offer the treatment and get some face-to-face -face, uh, experiential um, 
experiential treatment with me. Excellent. So if people don't happen to be in Austin, Texas, is there a national registry where people can find out um, where a Reiki practitioner is in their area? I've investigated that, and at the current time, there does not seem to be one unique registry where all Reiki practitioners can list their, their uh, contact information. I noted, noted that there are schools who have listings, but they're listings only of people who studied at that specific school. And there are organizations that have listings, but those listings are limited only to people who are members of those specific organizations. So that's something that in the Reiki community we, we don't currently have and I would like to see. I would really love to see that happen. So if people are visiting another city and would like to have a Reiki session after a long flight, um, it would be really nice if they could communicate via one central um, website. But right now what people do is they just Google Reiki and Google the city they're visiting in and just find the people uh, who offer Reiki in that city. So I would say, unfortunately, we do not have one website, but we do have Google. Yes, that's actually always good advice um, yeah. to Google Google things, right? Um, do you have any last parting advice for somebody who is thinking about trying Reiki, but um, for one reason or another may not have done it yet? What I would suggest is if they seek out a qualified practitioner, they look at the website, they look at the information that that person suggests, and perhaps they might, they might, might even want to talk to someone who's already either gone through a Reiki training or is a Reiki client and get a, a recommendation. On my website, I have a page of testimonials that's related not just to Reiki, but to my uh, the th services that I offer in general. And so I would suggest that uh, the person do some good re diligent research and look at the testimonials and talk to people who've previously had Reiki experience with that Reiki um, master and then make an informed decision after that. And so I would really suggest that if someone wants to find more balance in their life and reduce their stress level and come to a point of harmony that they might consider Reiki as a treatment of choice. Well, Ariana, I want to thank you for being my guest today on Massage Unwrapped. Thank you so much, Linda. It was a pleasure. Until next time, I am Linda Roysom.